Good morning and welcome to this uh, tutorial on the fundamentals of reproductive efficiency on dairy herds. Uh, reproductive efficiency is an important driver of economic efficiency on dairy operations. Very critical to make sure that uh, we are operating at maximal efficiency in terms of our reproduction uh, program. Fundamentally, what reproduction efficiency does is it produces replacements at a faster rate. So there will be more available heifers to replace uh, non-profitable cows or to expand the herd. It also does something that's more nuanced, and that is it dilutes animal maintenance and replacement over more pounds of milk production. And we'll see this visually in some of the analytics that will follow. But before we do that, let's review some basic terminology. First of all, days to first breeding is the time interval from calving to the time that a cow is first bred. The average of these days to first breeding is often considered the voluntary weight in terms of what is the time period from calving uh, that a producer uh, will wait on cows before they start entering the breeding population uh, where they're going to attempt to get them inseminated. Estrus detection percent is the percent of eligible cows that are observed in estrus or heat over a 21-day period of time. Conception rate is the percentage of cows that have been bred that have also conceived. So in the numerator are the number of cows that have conceived, in the denominator are the number of animals that have been bred. Pregnancy rate is the percent of eligible cows conceiving within a 21-day period of time. So one can think of it as the multiplication of estrus detection rate times conception will equal pregnancy rate. Now there are other ways of calculating it using uh, concepts in survival analysis and actuarial analysis to, to uh, calculate a more accurate pregnancy rate. But in essence, in essence, it is the percentage of eligible cows conceiving within a 21-day period of time. Calving interval is the interval between calvings, and this is often presented in terms of months or days. So it's from one calving interval event uh, to a consecutive calving interval event for a cow. Now, what do we mean by this dilution of maintenance? Well, first of all, every cow, every adult cow, requires feed cost or feed for maintenance. We need to feed at least um, 18 to 20 pounds of dry matter that will have maybe 10 mcals of energy per cow per day. So in other words, we have to may have a bare minimum of feed going into cows just to maintain their daily activities, maintaining body temperature, maintaining posture, and what have you. And then furthermore, behind each adult cow that is a producing cow, we have a replacement animal that we have to pay uh, feed cost and rearing cost for. So there's a replacement cost of an animal um, uh, for each dairy cow in, in the herd. And both of these costs, of course, occur before we even make any pounds of milk. Then the milking herd is, of course, fed additionally. Uh, and this additional feed is for milk uh, produced on top of maintenance and replacement. And um, this is what we mean by marginal feed. So this is feed that is uh, fed above maintenance and ultimately that will determine the, the production level of the cow. And so the goal is to produce as many pounds of milk possible so we dilute these fixed costs of maintenance and replacement because these costs occur independent of the level of milk production. Now to illustrate, the, illustrate these concepts, we are looking at a curve, a lactation curve of a cow that's uh, the line here with the little uh, dots indicating the amount of milk she produces per day. So we see that uh, she calves and then milk production increases to peak milk and then slowly declines. So milk production is a curvy linear response. And then the blue line is indicating when the cow is pregnant or through gestation, so roughly about nine months of time. And we have down here a slider where we can manipulate the calving interval. So as I extend the calving interval, in other words, the time dimension between, uh, between calvings, okay, we see that this lactation curve is extended, and we see that the, there are many more days now when the cow is producing lower levels of milk. 
Now throughout this whole time period, her maintenance cost and her fixed cost, uh, her maintenance uh, and replacement costs are remaining the same. So uh, these are costs that um, uh, we're going to pay whether she's milking, in this case, near 105 pounds or whether she's milking only uh, a low level of, uh, of uh, 75 or maybe down in the low 30s. Now we can look at this by putting some actual dials up that calculate what the average milk production is. So here we're looking at the uh, milk per day. Um, uh, throughout the entire lactation what the average milk is. So the average in this case was 81.9 pounds of milk and the average through pregnancy uh, was about 81.3. They're almost very similar because uh, most of the time that she's milking she's also pregnant in this uh, short calving interval situation. But now as I extend that calving interval we see that wow the milk per day uh, goes down rather precipitously and especially the milk per day that she's pregnant because more of the whole lactation cycle is occurring when the cow is making lower milk yield. But the maintenance cost of the cow is also accumulating. In other words, every day I'm paying now that 10 m cows of, of energy uh, for the, to maintain those cows. Now we can look at this uh, in terms of what is the maintenance cost and replacement cost uh, uh, instead of lactation. So here we have the maintenance cost per hundred weight and the replacement cost per hundred weight. And what we see is that as we increase, as we increase that calving interval, uh, these costs go up uh, rather dramatically. In other words, uh, I'm not diluting maintenance and replacement costs as efficiently as I am uh, when I have it um, a, a short calving interval. And so this is the one of the fundamental drivers of reproductive efficiency on, on the dairy herd. Okay, the other concept is that pregnancy rate and calving interval are related. Pregnancy rate, the percentage of cows, of eligible cows getting pregnant every 21 days, determines the distribution of calving intervals for a herd and thus the dilution of animal maintenance. Management through culling can manipulate the value of calving interval. So here, if we look at this uh, analytic, this shows the distribution of calving intervals. So on the x-axis we have the calving intervals and on the um, y-axis is the percentage of cows. And this blue line is the do not breed line. In other words, uh, we are not interested in maintaining cows that go beyond uh, this um, do not breed line which is set at 18 point months uh, because their dilution of maintenance is so inefficient. And so we can see that as we change the pregnancy rate for a herd we shift a larger proportion of the cows into shorter calving interval situations where they dilute their maintenance and replacement costs more effectively compared to cows with extended calving intervals. Furthermore, we reduce the number of animals that are called for reproductive failure in that the, we reduce the number of animals that are going to go beyond 18.1 months. Uh, we can put up some reproductive gauges that actually can calculate this. So if I had a pregnancy rate of 26.0%, about almost 5% of animals would go beyond the 18.1 month uh, do not breed line. Now if I was to decrease that reproductive efficiency, in other words make things worse, notice that the percentage of cows that go beyond uh, the 18.1 months now is up there near 20. And so this becomes very costly to the dairy industry. So again, we reduce the number of animals that have very short calving intervals and thus reduce the number of animals that are um, uh, reducing maintenance cost efficiently and also we have increased number of animals that are potentially uh, reproductive culls for the dairy herd. So very very costly uh, for a dairy um, operation. We can look at the management factors that are involved in, uh, in terms of controlling uh, the, uh, the, this distribution of uh, calving intervals and rebreeding technologies are going to really determine 
um, uh, what, what animals are first inseminated here, what is your breeding technology, and rebreeding is going to determine uh, who is open and gets uh, uh, rebred as quickly as possible in combination with uh, uh, pregnancy checking to ensure that these um, uh, occur uh, very quickly, and then you have culling uh, technologies that determine when to stop uh, the tail of the animal. So if you have any questions please feel free to write to me at uh, galligan at vet.upenn and the web URL is dairy and, and dairy-boards.org. Thank you.